so now is the fun part of um, the day. So I, I can see our numbers have dwindled a little bit because it's been a long day. Um, we did have at one point 380 of you here. I know there's not 308 of you here right now, um, but that means there's more beer and, and chips upstairs later for us. Um, now I'm gonna ask the Red Hatters who've been on stage and some of the support folks to come up and join us now so that we can have a little bit of a Q&A session before we go off and have a beer and you, you really drill them down. Um, Naz, is he in the room? Is Naz here, my runner? Mm, my runner's not here. I may be the runner or I might, I might tap. Oh, there you are now. It's great. So take one of these, and um, whoever asks the first question gets the first beer. <laughs> yeah, I know. You can't ask it. So um, if you can come all the way onto the stage, um, grab a few seats, let the people who are the most tired, the furthest away, and I'm going to give that to you. And um, All right. So do we have a volunteer for the first question? Right there, Naz. So um, as we're getting set up. All right, and some of you can sit down. You're allowed. No, nobody wants, nobody wants to sit down. I was looking at those chairs going, I need new chairs for my kitchen and my living room, and I'm like, I really like those chairs. They may be coming home. I can't get that in my suitcase. So all right, go ahead and ask, ask your first question here. So. Uh, my question is related to the last session which we had. Uh, I'm glad to hear that uh, OpenShift Dedicated will be available for GCP soon. So do you have the same plans like AWS that customers will be able to deploy it in their own VPCs? Um, no, not, uh, there's not a plan for that necessarily. So OpenShift Installer today builds a VPC when you do the IPI install. And we use the IPI install um, for OpenShift dedicated. Right. OK. This is what we do to our interns. We make them runners. <laughs> and um, yes. We've heard a bit about various clouds today, including Red Hat and IBM Z Cloud. Obviously, with the merger of Red Hat and IBM, um, where do you see the relationship of those two cloud services? What do you see the future? Oh, can you do the right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have not been authorized to speak about this, but I will anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think the conversations that a lot of us have been having um, across groups, right? I mean, we're the same company now, but we're still independent, have been very positive, right? We're bringing each other um, into projects and, and learning from each other, and I think we're all getting better for it. Yeah, I, I would say... Is that one, a non-answer for you? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm going to ad, ad lib a little bit on that, too, because one of the interesting things, I, I don't know if you remember the very beginning of the day, because that was a long time ago, there was that um, jellyfish diagram where I was showing the intersection of the IBM and the Red Hatters who are working on different open source projects and the collaborations. What it, there isn't always a lot of overlap, too. But what it's done is it has extended our reach into a lot of different projects that, um, so that we are now connected to these other projects and we have resources to reach out and tap to find out about new features and functions and help us um, integrate in there. So from an open source perspective, it's really opened up a lot of doors for us. Also, I, you know, I think the Tekton work too, we've seen a lot of people coming together from IBM and Red Hat and working on um, that. So it's, there's lots of really great examples, even in the past, how many months has it been? Six months? I'm like, I can't even, it, it seems like forever. Um, maybe not. But it's really um, expanded our universe in terms of how we can support each other in the open source community, as well as extended the resources that are available for us to help you um, implement and deploy um, OpenShift and OpenStack and all of the other projects that we have. Um, it, it's really, uh, the, I think, the ramp up training everybody on all of our technologies has been interesting. Yeah. Uh, in, I, mean, I think one of the the concerns that I've, sorry, one of the concerns that I've heard from a lot of customers is, is this going to change the Red Hat culture, right? Is this going to change the way we do business, the way we interact with customers and partners? And the answer so far has been a resounding no. Um, if anything, we have been given opportunities to accelerate. Yeah. 
and, and we've been given additional revenue to support um, hosting events like this. So like the IBM Z folks who have a wonderful reference architecture and you should go talk to them about Linux One and all the great things, they're upstairs. But it's also, you know, it's given us, I think it's given us a lot more resources to um, do more innovation and, and grab more resources from different places. Uh, the whole multi-cloud project group that's come on board, it's, it's pretty amazing. And without the acquisition, we wouldn't see something like that happen. It would have been very difficult to expand like that. Yeah, so I, I do want to be clear, open first. And so, so it's not going to be going to uh, doing any kind of proprietary exclusive offerings with IBM Cloud. And so you, you'll, the choices you have today, you'll have more choices in the future, yeah. to be clear. Yeah. Cool. All right, another question right down here. We get to point to. In a multi-cloud uh, design, do you see OpenShift uh, being the one uh, uh, joining and giving the view of the security across all cloud service provider? because each is having a lot of fragmentation in this space. So do you see OpenShift to implement something to unify? I think there's lots of opportunities there. Um, we're still kind of fluffing out some of the details, to be honest. Um, I guess one of the areas you kind of got a, a flash of it this morning that I didn't go into that kind of goes to your question is um, we're doing some work with net on the networking side to kind of join these clouds together. And, and when we looked at it, the initial thought was, well, you've got multiple different clusters. Let's just stick a VPN in there and connect them together, and, and you're done, and, and everything's nice and, and good. But then, you know, when we took a second look at it, we realized, you know, we're dependent on services in there. We want to do that, and you, and then you get to, well, actually, I'm going to set up some network policies. So, what do we, what do I do about that? How do we propagate them? How do I handle them? So. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at, I don't know if I said this already, sorry, I'm blanking on it. We're using the Submariner project and part of that are things called Light, Lighthouse and Coast Guard. And Coast Guard is about this, spreading this policy around. So that together with, um, you know, the, the integration, I kind of talked about IBM MCM, um, that has policies and you can look at um, whether you're in, um, in policy or not on your clusters. So, the, the, you know, there's kind of opportunities right across the stack to do that. So, yes, I think it's core to the answer. Do we have that all fleshed out yet? Not, not quite now, but I think we're, we're close with things like the networking pieces that we're doing, the, the great work that the storage teams are doing as well to kind of pull that all together. So, yeah, it could be a, a good solution there. Similar sort of vein around the, the multi-cloud thing over here. <laughs> um, I was really taken by the, the um, OpenShift Hive um, operator. Um, right now, I'm guessing that is single cloud, yeah. but with the with the capability to have clusters across multiple and, and have a true hybrid, do you think it may go that way so that you can have a management hive that can actually stand up into different cloud infrastructures? So you could have some on-prem, some public. Uh, so, so yeah, um, and we'll probably let the dedicated team chip in as well. Um, so one of the things that we're looking at, um, I think I, we had it on the roadmap, is integration with MCM. So um, I feel like a sales rep for MCM at the moment. Sorry about that. Um, but one of the things that you'll see on the demos that you do today is they'll have their environment running and then looking across different cloud providers with Red Hat OpenShift in there. So, you know, Hive from our viewpoint, it's going to plug into that because the thing that's missing in multi-cloud manager right now is the ability to deploy additional clusters, just like you guys have, have, have done with OpenShift dedicated already that lets you do that. So yeah, we're, we're going to go across hybrid. I, I mean, that's a, I, I don't know, let me ask you all. We, we see that as a major use case, right? We're positioning ourselves as being cloud agnostic, go with any of the providers, go with two, go with on-prem and one, is that, you know, I'm seeing some nodding heads, that, that's definitely where we see ourselves sitting, so absolutely we'll be doing tooling around that. I want everybody to keep hands at different sides so we run them around. Hi, so, so like a bunch of folk, we, we use Calico. Um, we need to because we're layer three. Um, I think Calico stops us from using your Istio, your service mesh version. And then I was hearing today that you've built your Knative solution on your service mesh and then Tekton on top of Knate. I'm a little bit worried that you're building links within links and that we might be excluded from some of the capability within, within OpenShift.
I'll try. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, yes, I definitely did mention that um, for serverless, it will install service mesh. And service mesh consists of, you know, three additional projects, Istio, Jaeger, and Kiali. Um, so there are some dependencies there. Um, Pipelines, just to clarify, Pipelines is built on top of Tecton, but Tecton doesn't have any of those other dependencies on any of those other products. Um, projects, excuse me. I guess I'm not sure, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what the question was exactly. Well, I, I'm, if you don't use OpenShift's built-in network solution, because you can't, because you can't do overlays, okay. are you excluded from using Red Hat's service mesh and therefore excluded mm. from using Red Hat's K-native implementation as well? That part, I don't know. <laughs> Can I grab you later on and yeah. get you an answer off of that? Good question, though. Yeah, yeah. that's a good question. I remember, your name's in the book now. Yeah. <laughs> Another question out there? I'm sorry, which network solution are you using? Calico. Calico, yeah. I mean, I'm new to Red Hat, so I think there's a lot of unknown knowns to me, but... I mean, Calico, I, I worked at Docker, so I did a lot of integration with Calico and Docker, right? So there's nothing that prevents you to work at Calico with sort of containers and container networking. Red Hat uses OVN, you know, inheritance of Open vSwitch, right? So I don't know the exact answer, but like I think there's a close answer there of, you know, there shouldn't be anything completely inconsistent of your ability to use Calico for, um, for your sort of network uh, framework for container support within Kubernetes. But I don't know the exact answer because I came from the non-Red Hat version of the integration. I don't know if that helps or not. But. Hi, hello. Um, I've got a question really more about the futures and um, specifically around edge computing. Um, you're seeing the major hyperscale providers showing their hand around their strategy. Um, you've seen AWS with um, AWS Wavelength, for example, and Outpost, the, the on-prem and lo local zones, etc., and also the move around um, in terms of supporting lower latency, next generation services, for want of a better term, moving the network ed edge out into the 5G network. Um, what is um, Red Hat's position around edge, edge computing and integration with, with the 5G network, et cetera, et cetera. I'll make Duncan answer that. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you another tap dance answer. So that um, I, I guess I, I tried to kind of hint at this this morning. Um, so Telco and Edge and 5G, we've seen that as a, a major opportunity for us. We, we've ramped up significantly, bringing lots of people into work in it. So it is areas that we're investigating. Um, it's still kind of being fleshed out. We, we took a project. Um, that was more generic, and I'm desperately trying to think of the code name for it right now, and I can't, I'm blanking. Um, and we've essentially repurposed them to look at the use cases that you're talking about. Um, you'll probably see some more about this in the, in the next few months as we flesh out what the project's doing. Um, I, I can be candid in the room. What, what we're doing right now is we've actually picked a partner stroke vendor stroke customer that we're working with on, on now to kind of go and deliver something right now. Um, I'm sure some of my colleagues here went through the pain. We, we um, believe it or not, we do plan, and we did four four planning a while ago, and um, we just had to do a little mini replan because of this telco opportunity. Because there was quite a lot of features just had to drop off the roadmap because we needed to go and execute on that side. So I, I can't give you specifics right now. I can maybe get you if you really want to want an answer. I can get you in contact with someone who can, but there'll be more coming on that soon. But yes, it's definitely. As I said, it's one of our four strategic areas of investment, one of our four big bets where we just see massive opportunity. And it really did kind of, I don't know, I'm not the brightest of people, so I don't know, we'll see the train coming down the track to hit me in the face, but that, that really kind of snuck up on us. If I could add just a couple of things. So um, what you saw um, with us previously with OpenStack was taking a great IS solution and making it fit for purpose for telcos. So a lot of work went into OpenStack in the, in the past just to make it more robust um, and, and better for the telco providers. So that's the goal now for, for 5G and OpenShift, right? To look at what are the feature gaps we have, 
like a, a telco provider has some extreme requirements, more so than you know, even some of the banks that we see here now. So that's the focus to the point about the 4-4 planning and beyond to fill those gaps. In terms of kind of you know, the broader vision, I mean, watch this space and we'll talk more about that in the future, but we're going to make this enterprise grade for telcos and carriers as the same one we've done for Linux in the past and then OpenStack. And I'll put in a pitch for, um, we do have a telco edge SIG. Um, if so, if you go to commons.openship.org, you can sign up and um, we, do, we do keep everybody informed. And we are, are going to host an edge telco OpenShift Commons gathering in 2020. I'm hoping it's in Vancouver um, alongside of uh, an OpenStack um, foundation event uh, in mid-June. So um, as he said, watch this space because we'll bring um, all of the product managers from both the edge and the telco um, initiatives as well as a number of the customers that were and partners that we're working with to talk about just this and we have a whole track that's all um, that has a number of talks at Red Hat Summit um, we're hosting a gathering there as well in when is Red Hat Summit it's in San Francisco end of May thank you very much end of April okay end of May is Tel Aviv we'll keep them straight but um, yeah so there's a lot of working on there's a few um, OpenShift Commons briefings China Mobile did a wonderful one um, that uh, went way over my head, um, but that, uh, talking about the use case and a lot of that, and that's really, again, where you guys coming on stage talking about your use cases help inform our roadmaps and stuff and have gotten us um, you know, into the space and into the conversation, so it's quite helpful. Another question? Okay, everybody, everybody else can see it. <laughs> way up in the back, yeah. That's okay, cool. So can we prepare a question at the back? Yeah, really. We're just going to make him run back and forth. That's all good. Thank you, Kru and Diane. Um, we've just seen a brilliant presentation from HP on health, and we all know that the Chinese have got major issues in this space and their wonderful connected 5G networks. Do you think next time we see a major virus like that, you'll be ready to assist and give people down to the handset guidance in real time? I'm not sure how to answer that. What was the question? I'm, I'm not quite sure what the question was there. Uh, Your last question alluded to 5G. As it happens, there's a summit for that upstairs now. Um, oh. The integration to the back ends to the health systems and that mass surveillance and the ability to update people, that could be something that you do next time. I think, actually, um, Francesco, who is here, is he still in the room from public health? He may have had to, to go. Um, but uh, if you looked at some of the work that they're doing around predictive um, and using leveraging OpenShift and other tools and OpenStack to predict this, to predict the size of epidemics and stuff, a lot of that work um, we're, we're hoping to enable um, at the, to, to predict that sort of stuff and um, make that happen. Um, it's always amazing to me and I think to all of us what people are actually doing on top of OpenShift and on top of the, the, the other op projects. Um, and you know, we just hope like with a projects like Open Data Hub and some of the great things that are going on to um, really enable that work. And yeah, it's, it's what inspires us to keep going. Okay. Question? question. Oh, is there a question over there really? Are we just gonna make them run all the way over there? <laughs> all right. Clock's <laughs> ticking, let's go. The beer's up there. You're getting paid by the mod by the kilometer. Thank you. Um, no, I think, um, first of all, the, this event um, is only as good as um, the engagement that we get from the community. And so far, these have been amazing, which is why we've had more and more events around the world and why they get richer and richer in content. Um, but we are coming up with um, EMEA KubeCon and with Red Hat Summit and others. So I just wanted to make a request. If, um, if, you have, if we have ISVs in the crowd that are looking to certify, we're looking to make a big push at Red Hat Summit. So feel free to reach out to us so that we can help you with that. And then if you're a customer using operators, we'd like to tell this, that story as well. So uh, we have a number of partners. They've certified their operators. We'd like to see you know, a, a customer who's using them that can speak to what that experience has been like. So just a shameless plug on things that we're looking for in the next uh, few events.
All right, and I'm gonna do a few more shameless plugs here too. So um, I'm really thrilled to have John Willis and um, having kicked off the DevOps, the DevSecOps SIG2, and if you, it's really gonna be um, a lot of fun um, and we're gonna learn a lot and there's a lot of great folks, um, the automated governance, tons yeah. of really cool stuff. Um, so if you go to commons.openshift.org and you scale about, or you slide down about halfway through, you'll see a section called interests. If there's an interest group there um, that's, or something that's missing there that you think we should be talking about, let me know, because um, I'll make you chair that working group or that SIG, um, and I'll find a counterpart for you too. So I'm, we're really interested in teasing out these stories getting more feedback and making sure that we're you know, the best fit for your workloads. So that's really, there's another question down here in the middle, because uh, Naz is gonna get two beers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I apologize, in the roadmap there is something in terms of function as a service to abstract across all uh, different cloud service provider, because uh, anyway it's the biggest trend is to move fast but there is a lot of uh, vendor locking. So do you, do you envision something in the next future into that space? Again, it's not, uh, I'm not an expert on that, it's just uh, side knowledge. Uh, Knative is supposed to be the debt solution. Uh, it's supposed to uh, provide you the agnostic that you get from other services within uh, OpenShift. Um, so they are currently, uh, you can go online to look for Knative. They have uh, uh, benchmarks there, they have their plans there, and a lot of additional information to answer that point. And it will, uh, product-wise, it will go by the name of uh, serverless, OpenShift serverless. Because we have to rename everything. <laughs> and that's just our, our shtick here. Any other questions? Can I ask two questions? I don't know how to pass it on down. Because we're going to start asking you there, questions. There were two people that I didn't get around to uh, at lunchtime with answers. So um, for the, the, person that, the persons that asked, um, power support for OpenShift is April, May timeframe. And someone was asking about Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization as a, um, a provider that you can install on, and that's in the 4.4 release, both automated install and user provided infrastructure. Hopefully they're still here, okay. doesn't look like it. I'm gonna make you pass it to Christian and a shameless plug, plug again for um, OKD and when yeah. do we think the OKD beta is coming out? Soon. <laughs> <laughs> ne yeah, ho hopefully next week actually. All right. um, He's been saying that for about three weeks so I'm just um, putting him on the spot here. Yeah, you can actually try out um, what we just talked about, the overt-based install on OKD already, that works um, already, so yeah. it'll be supported. We, we build off of the master branch, which eventually will become 4.4. So, yeah, cool. um, just right. like that. All right, well, um, if we can get a big round of applause for all of these people, especially ones. <laughs>